Drax Project, we're on the clock. We're on the, we're on the, we're on the clock. clock. Oh, the first time awesome. in a while. Fantastic. Yeah, how does it feel to be on the clock again? Man. Well, you know, it's good to be here. It's good to be on the clock. It's been a while off the clock, and now we're on the clock. It feels good. That's good. That's succinct. Yeah. Um, before we get too much into this new sort of era for you guys, I want to take it back a little bit. Back to 2013, when we first started out, we were playing, we were studying jazz music, right? Is that how, we, how you guys all met? Uh, I might interrupt you there, Sam, yeah, you, and invite take, you to take, speak. Take, oh, both go I'll for take, it. The, I'll take the wheel. <laughs> um, Sean, Matt, and I met at uh, jazz school, and Ben was at another music school, really close. Yeah. Um, and we had like mutual mutual friends, um, and you know the Wellington music scene is pretty small. Mm. So uh, yeah, inevitably we all met each other through that, and then we ended up living together mm. at different times in this like funny flat in a place called Brooklyn. It was and, ideal uh, because we were learning our in- individual instruments, which are different from each of our... So he's a bass player, for example, guitarist, singer, and drums. saxophone. Drums. And even drums. So oh if you put God. that together... Yes, that makes a band. You get the band. What yeah. kind of attracted you to each other as bandmates? Were you guys like, these, li- these guys in my class are the best at their instruments, or is it more that you guys were mates, or like... Me? Oh, if I just... Thank you. Uh, if um, me and Matt started busking... Oh, yeah. Because we, we wanted to make some cash. Yeah, drums and sacks. Because I didn't want right. to pay rent. Mm. And then um, and the I didn't want to get a normal job. I did not want to pay rent. I wanted to pay rent, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't want to get a normal job. And then so, and we were going to school, so I yeah. went busking with Matt, and then Sam joined on at some point. And, and then Ben, a couple of months later, joined because we needed a, a laptop, and he had Oh, one. yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's and hot so property. Good. Yeah, yeah great. Yeah, it was back in the day. You know, laptops were, this was like a big thing. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we just there was no like looking for a band. Like we just kind of fell into mm. the band. If I wasn't, it wasn't like you're the best. You're the best. You're the best. <laughs> yeah. Let's make the best um, thing. We're gonna have a super band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of fell into it. Okay, so what were those early influences? Who were you covering while you were busking? What was the sort of vibe? What song was everyone like stopping okay. and listening to? Do you remember? Thrift Shop by Macklemore. Macklemore, yeah, Macklemore. yeah, yeah. So it's got that saxophone line. Oh dun, 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 dun. That just came out. Yeah. And it was taking over the world. We would play every fifth song. Maybe every third or fourth song, actually, while we were busking. When you're wow. busking, you just got a whole new crowd every 15 True. seconds. So it's just rinse and repeat. So that was... What else did we play? Could have Stevie Wonder. Because there's no mic, like, in a busking situation. Mm. So Sean couldn't sing any of the, like, lyrics or anything. So they were often, you know, songs with... A really specific lick, you know. Mm. There's um, um, Cry Me a River. I like to like move it. Lots of, of JT. Is there not much, not many music, not much music these days with riffs? But back in the day, yeah. hey, riffs. what are you doing, guys? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, doing? you guys are musicians. We're off the clock. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the clock. <laughs> on the clock. <laughs> um, okay, interesting. So you were playing sax instead of singing in these busking days. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I, that's what I did originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when did it switch over to being more, like, legitimized as a band? We're making an EP, we're putting out singles, where Sean, you're singing, and, like... Pretty much when Ben, uh, when ben joined. Okay. Yeah. Mm. We'd oh, written, that laptop! We'd, ri- we'd <laughs> written one original song before Ben joined, and it's very average, so, yeah. Is that we searchable? Wanna, we want... Could we find it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's on a it's on a, it's on a, it's on a band, band camp. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> we'll find that. Insert clip here. <laughs> Let's do something real. Um, okay, we fast forward 2017. Um, you drop the track that kind of sends you global. Look up late. Late. That's yep. it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that groundswell like when did you realize that this was getting listened to it was kind of sending you onto this international radar obviously like hooks you up with opening act slots Mm. what what was going through your mind and how old would you guys have been at that point it's a good question i might get ben in on this seven or eight yeah 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 (laughs) i think we might have been about 22 or something Mm. yeah i can't yeah 20 20 early early 20s yeah okay but it was um it was weird because Woke Up Late, when we were writing it, we were writing an album and that song was just kind of just one of them. We didn't mm. think that it was that good and it just happened to be the first song that we finished. So we were like, oh, we should probably put a single out. This one's, this one's done. It. Yeah, we liked it. We were like, oh, we'll put it out, see what happens. And it just took off and it was like, 
number one in Shazam in New Zealand for like three months or something. Right. As an independent as well. Like, we no, were, we're signed. Universal, I think, in New Zealand. Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. copy. But it's yeah. drawing us international attention. The Shazam specifically. The Shazams, yeah. And it was we opened for Lord like a couple of weeks after putting it out and then it was kind of simmering and then Ed Sheeran came to New Zealand and we opened for him for three nights in yeah. Auckland and that's what, that was what really took it. It was like it had been on the radio for a couple of months and people there were like, Oh, it's these dudes. I didn't know these guys were Kiwis, like yeah. I know these guys, it's their song. Yeah. And it was, and it, was it was crazy as well because we hadn't really played it. We hadn't played it live at all, and so then we come out and play it on stage in front of like forty something thousand people, um, opening for Ed Sheeran, and then people were like, the majority of the people in the stadium like start singing it, or like a yeah. large amount, and we're like, oh wow, okay, this is happening. Like, wow, and we were still all working day jobs. Like Matt <coughs> and Ben were painting houses, and you were hearing it on the radio and stuff. So that yeah. was kind of like... All day. I think that was kind yeah, of the right. click. The click situation. <laughs> You're like, God, i got to finish painting. This is <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. Are you reading my questions? No. Actually, <laughs> no. He's cheating. He's cheating. Yeah. This is not an exam. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. And then Camilla Cabello happens. Hayley Steinfeld hears your song while you guys are opening for her. Yes. What was that moment when someone told you that Hayley wanted to jump on this track? It, that's ex- it's exactly that as well. Manager just came into our studio one day and was just like, "Sit down." Uh, Firstly, he said, "Sit down." He said, "Sit down." You're gonna need to sit down. Why <laughs> does it? Is it how would you f- guys feel about Haley Steinfeld singing on Woke Up Late? And we're just like, "Get off the grass." We, <laughs> didn't we loved believe Starving him. as well. That was like mm. one that we were slamming at the time. Yeah. So mm. it was like that was pretty cool. Yeah. Mm. I'm interested to know by at this point, like, you guys have come from a jazz background. You're making this pop music with a sort of R&B element in it, um, obviously has jazz influence, but you're also building this kind of, like, boy band space. Mm. Was that something hard for you to own? Like, I know that pop music, easily accessible. Jazz music, probably one of the least accessible. Sometimes indulgent, one would say. (laughs) And then pop also (laughs) stigmatised. Like, people don't want to be like, I'm a pop artist. People are like, I'm an alt pop artist. I'm an indie pop artist. I'm a rock pop artist. But, like, to build something like that, was that hard for you guys to be like, oh, no, actually, we do pop. Mm. We... Like, like to do a bit of choreography, see the crazy dance clip. Like, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> music video, I should say. Yeah, but, like, yeah, yeah. Was, was that interesting, that relationship? It was something we had to come to terms with because we were quite confused, especially just, like, we started while we were still in music school and, like, mm. pop was such a dirty word. Like, it was yeah. like, no, we're not, we'll put a key change here. We're like, oh, it's not complex enough. We've got to change it. And it was kind of just through playing gigs and writing songs mm-hmm. working with other people working with other people like getting advice and stuff like also like like playing covers playing and covers, realizing yeah. like what a cover does to a crowd compared to original they've never heard it's like man i want to have that feeling of like making like the crimea river yeah. drop yeah, like, yeah. yeah look at these people go off like let's try and make something like there that. was a moment though where we d- did have to just look in the mirror and we're like we're a pop band we're writing pop music let's go for it let's yeah. do it and we kept trying to put in like little bits that were like oh look what I can do you know <laughs> and then it, it was a development process to kind of get past that and be like okay what's actually right for the song rather than like what mm. uh, our fellow jazz musician peer is going to be like oh yeah that's what we had that. to learn which is such an obvious thing to say but like the song is the king you know like mm. if, if it's good for the song then it's good yeah. which took us a while to fully realise as a band yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so you're popping off, for lack of a better word. Um, and then, <laughs> popping off, let's go, let's go. Um, taking over the world. You've come from, I always wonder this personally. I'm originally from Brisbane, which is like smaller than Sydney. I've always thought, man, I wonder what would have happened if I grew up in LA. Do you find growing up in New Zealand was a hindrance, or do you think it's helped to have that point of difference coming from like a unique place in the world where it's more insular you're not getting all that outside of outside noise i think about this a lot actually you do yeah i thought about <laughs> it a lot brainwave <laughs> um it's like if in a bigger space you have a bigger opportunity to reach more people mm. but it's harder so if you're in a small place like it's easier for more for, for a higher percentage of people to know you yeah and so like i do think that it did help us to be to come from a small place to get to that first but level. especially in New Zealand like people 
seem to like New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, like, and totally. People, like, Americans are like... Maybe not here. Maybe not here. <laughs> maybe not hey, Aussie. Guys. You know, but, you know, like, On the record, no, no, I like no. New Zealand. But you know so what I mean? Welcome. Like, when we're in, we when we're in America, you're like... Where are you guys from? We're, like, we're from we're from New Zealand, and everyone's like, <laughs> oh, fish and chips, yeah. bro. Yeah, I don't know. It, it genuinely does help. Like, I don't know. It's it's something to be. Anyway. Yeah, mm. and like we were we were trying to do our thing internationally always. Like, it mm. wasn't like we were like, let's get huge in New Zealand. It was like we just want to be as big as we can. Mm. And yeah, I don't think it was hindrance. I don't okay. think so, yeah. I think it's interesting as well because, and this isn't like for everybody, but I, I'm sure like in bigger centres where there's a more established established industry, people are like, okay, this is the way you have to go. Like, this is the sound you have to, yeah, you this have is to how you have to sound, this is what you have to wear, this is like all these sorts of things. And I feel like maybe being a little bit removed from that kind of was good mm. in a way. Um, I'm sure like, and there are heaps of, examples of it the other way as well people who are really unique in bigger places but yeah I think for us it was good for that reason yeah interesting all right then you popped out a debut album then we went into lockdown we're just going to move straight through that pivotal big moment for you guys yeah, yeah, I know. stuck in New Zealand what were you guys doing through lockdown who are you listening to and were you working on a sophomore album I've never heard that word used <laughs> with us before. That's quite funny. Sophomore S- album. Sophomore album? I kind of like that. Second album? For Maybe, a... yeah. <laughs> we, we just, honestly, we, like, took the opportunity to... Relax. Um, just, like, work as much as we could. Okay. And, like... Were you back at the day jobs? Nah. No. We're, no. We were very, we're very lucky we're to get there. to a, a point, you know, we got to the breaking point. We could, yeah. We, we could coast along. Yeah. Um, but it was weird, you know. It we was did. weird. We did have, a, no like, gigs. to say that we didn't, that we just, like, got straight into working, it's like, it wasn't really yeah. like that. It was because we were supposed to be going back to the States three mm. weeks after COVID hit New Zealand and then went into lockdown. So we had our tickets booked and everything. We also had a gig and, at, at Sydney Opera House. Oh, yeah, and we had two shows at Sydney Opera House, which we were doing, like, for to raise money for the bushfires. Oh, yeah. But then <laughs> got but then that got cancelled. So they all got cancelled, and then it was kind of like, oh, wow, like, what do we do now? At the time, you know, it was like, oh, it might be opening up again real soon. Yeah, yeah. And so it was like a weird, like... But it was it was quite Everyone strange. And so it was it, like... Like, I was, you know, my girlfriend had a flat in Wellington, and then it's like, cool, well, I guess I'm, like, here now. Like, and then it took, like, a bit of adjusting, and, yeah, we did have a bit of chill time, but then when we could be together and actually start working, we got into figuring out what we wanted to... We got right better at production, next, yeah. I think. You know, like, trying to work with just ourselves. Mm. And the, we've been at, in L.A. for, like, a year working with other producers and stuff. We couldn't... We didn't have access to that anymore, so we just kind of, like, tried to do it ourselves. And Who does yeah. the majority of the production? Honestly, all of us. Yeah? I mean, I do the vocal production. Yeah. Okay. Ben does heaps of beat stuff. Ben, Matt does beat stuff. Mm-hmm. Matt plays guitar now. You know, like, Ben plays keys now. <laughs> oh my God. We did a lot of learning in the last couple of years, yeah. Sam plays trombone now. Yeah, it's Sam... crazy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Sans tap dancing now, which is cool. Oh, that's yeah. good. Oh, see, next music video. There yeah. you go. <laughs> so good. Was that weird, the um, choreography for that? Were you just like, all right, here we go, get my dancing shoes out? It was really, out. it Were was you guys weird. Like, I'm not a natural on. dancer. I'm not a natural dancer. <laughs> it was like the day before we shot the video as well. <laughs> Oh, I love that. I try my best. That's hey, what I'll say. I, 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 I could see it. it was great. I was trying yeah. my very hardest. You know, I'm not a dancer, but yeah. I was stressed. I'm not a rapper. Like, why are we learning this the day before? I was like, I need to You give me time. <laughs> ah. Okay, so you were just talking before about how you had time to, like, breathe before you got into what this next phase looks at. The fruits of that mad at you. Let's talk about the new single. This yeah. song's about forgiveness. It is, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I... One of my favorite songs we've made together as a band okay. came. It was born out of a voice note, like six years old, that Matt sent to a ch- our WhatsApp chat. I thought you were about to say it sent to a, ch- a chick, and I was like, no, 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 "Did no. he?" No, nah, he was like, "It was like the day before we were going to like write some music," and he's like, "Yo, remember this?" And was like, "Da da 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 da." Oh, I was like, "Na na 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 na." Like the whole melody was there, and um. And yeah, we just like we're just like we need to make a song out of that, and we did. It was just like this perfect. Like Matt had this beat ready, we had the melody ready. We wrote. We, we did wrote, it in like a few hours. We yeah. wrote the lyrics with this. Well, we wrote the song with this um, girl, Maddie Simmon, who is in LA, and we did it over Zoom. It was cool. It was awesome. Yeah, I love it. I love the song. We produced it ourselves. I'm real proud of it. 
I'm proud of Mad at You. Hey, you should be. Yeah. It's a great track. Thanks. It's <laughs> like it's popping up. I love it. It's the first like kind of slow, <laughs> slow R and B tune we've done. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah it kind of is actually. Yeah. Yeah. Is that kind of indicative of this next era? Um, it's the it's definitely the most chill song. Okay. Of the EP. Okay. I think so. uh, yeah. Are the drums really gonna have a thrash then? If this is the most <laughs> the drums chill. Gonna, yeah, we're, we get. We kind of like wanted it? to bring it back a little bit, yeah. get some influence from like JT Justified era, mm. with a little bit of yeah. I don't know, a little bit frosted of Bruno tips. Mars. Yeah, oh. frosted tips. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I got my, I got the whole thing blonded. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. gone now. But yeah. bring it back, they <laughs> say. Bring it back. But yeah, we've been trying to like take a lot from our like actual musical influences that we really love because we haven't really made music like the stuff that we listen to as much mm. in the past like but we do now yeah 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 that's sweet full circle mm. all right looking ahead what's coming up are we doing a little tour uh, uh have we got a string of releases in the can waiting to go we what have we 40 at? songs on a whiteboard in our studio oh. and we're just we're just we're just tucking them off yeah. Bam, bam, bam. Exactly, yeah. How many weeks left in the year? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, still maybe 20. <laughs> we we, we want to put an EP out this year. Okay. We, we are going to put an EP out this year. And hopefully we put like another full album out at the end of the year. We just have so much music. Yeah. We're ready to go. Yeah. And then we'll reschedule those opera house dates. So we'll yeah. get that happening again. We'll definitely, we we we'll definitely be over here, if not once like twice or three times. Like, thrice. Yeah, thrice. Oh, yeah. What's one, after thrice? Once, twice or thrice. Thri- oh. Fries. Four. 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 Fries. Four. Fries. Four. Fries. Yeah, yeah. Where should we play? Oh, yeah. Sydney. Opera House. Go, go um, big, quintessential. Go big. What, okay. Actually, no, go on the Harbour Bridge. Just lock oh, that shit down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get on the, on the on arch. The like, yeah. Get those, like, harness things. We'll then. hire out some helicopters with spotlights, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go bankrupt. Though. Yeah. So worth it. <laughs> hey, I mean, that's great content. Really It'll go viral. What's, what's like, a, like, a really good kind of, like, underground, not underground, but just, like, tight... Intimate. Vibe-y. Yeah, mm. yeah. Five, Something we could just like do like a real dirty set in. Oh, go lands down. That one's like a classic one that every like artist moves through. What is it? it the Land. lands down. The lands. It's like down. a little like gig room, and it was gonna close down, and everyone was like, "Oh my god, no!" Yeah. Um, but then it's just been bought by new owners by the so, people who do Oxford Art Factory, which oh, is cool. also a classic. You could do that one too. Yeah. We want to do some like dirty sets. Back. Yep. Throw it back. Stuff. You know? Yeah, grimy stuff. Grimy Got this stuff. R&B. Oh, oh. Gonna have these thrashing drums. We're yeah. gonna have some grime. <laughs> gonna have some Justin Timberlake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, I'm looking forward to it. Thank yeah. you so much for your time today. Thanks. For Thank you. Support. Thanks for having us.